Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button if you guys are enjoying the content that we're throwing up. And uh, make sure you guys hit the like button if you enjoy the video. And yeah, let's begin. What's going on guys, this is Rob, and we are back again with another installment of our Beyond Omega Level series, where we break down the origins, powers, and feats of the strongest characters in comics. And this week, we're focusing on one of the most powerful villains to ever plague Asgard, Surtur. So Surtur, or at least the Marvel version of Surtur, was created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, and first appeared in Journey into Mystery number 97 in 1963. But like most characters in the Thor mythos, he's based on a Norse myth. Surtur belongs to a race known as the Fire Giants, who hail from the realm of Muspelheim, and at some unknown point came to be the ruler of that realm. In his earliest appearances, we see Surtur has been imprisoned by Odin as a punishment for attempting to destroy the world. Now, he's later released from his imprisonment by Loki and subsequently invades Earth along with a storm giant called Skag. It takes the combined forces of Odin and his sons, Thor and Baldur, to repel the invasion, and Odin is significantly weakened in the process. And so at the end of the conflict, Surtur is imprisoned once again, this time being confined to a meteorite in another galaxy. Now, Surtur is best known for being one of the entities that brings about Ragnarok, or the destruction of Asgard, a process that is repeated several times throughout history as Asgard is destroyed and subsequently rebuilt. And we learn that in his first encounter with Odin, Surtur was approached by Odin and his brothers Vili and V. Upon learning that Surtur planned on destroying their world with the Twilight Sword and Eternal Flame of Destruction, Odin proposes destroying both weapons, which predictably does not sit well with Surtur, who sends his demonic minions to attack the three brothers who merge into one entity to battle Surtur. Now they're unable to defeat Surtur, but they do manage to destroy destroy the sword and steal the brazier containing the eternal flame. And so after the brothers return to their original form, only Odin is able to escape and Vili and V are killed by Surtur. But as they die, they transfer their power to Odin. And so Surtur is actually a key figure in Odin becoming as powerful as he is, as the transfer of power led to the creation of what we call the Odin Force. Now Surtur is over 1,000 feet tall and possesses immense strength and durability, proving to be of much greater strength than Thor. He was also capable of picking up the Black Pyramid, which serves as a base of operations for the Egyptian Egyptian god Seth and throw it without any difficulty. When Surtur came to Earth, he was strong enough to remove a large chunk from the center of the planet and send it into orbit, where it would eventually become Earth's moon. Furthermore, Surtur is referred to as a breaker of stars, and the swings of his hammer as he works in his forge send reverberations that are felt in a billion, billion worlds. Now, in terms of durability, it's nearly impossible to deal any meaningful damage to Surtur. Strikes from Thor, who's generally regarded not only as the strongest Asgardian, but one of the strongest characters in the Marvel Universe, do not face Surtur, even when Thor is wielding one of the universe's most powerful weapons in his hammer, Mjolnir. Even Thor, Odin, and Loki working together were only able to temporarily slow down Surtur, and Surtur not only survived being hit with a planet-sized object hurled at him by Thor, but was able to produce enough heat to melt it instantaneously. He's able to endure massive amounts of heat, having survived in a sea of flames, and was unharmed by blasts of mystical energy from Loki, as well as an attack from Odin, wielding a powerful weapon called the Scepter Supreme, which the Allfather states possesses incalculable power. Even the strongest weapon in the Asgardian arsenal, the Cosmic Cannon, had no effect when Surtur was hit with its full blast. In addition to his strength and durability, Surtur seemingly never tires from battle, as for a long time, he was locked in a battle with Odin that renewed itself every day, seemingly for eternity. Now, as a fire giant, Surtur also possesses the ability to generate and manipulate massive amounts of heat and fire. The fire generated by Surtur is enough to melt Asgardian buildings and to cause the seas to boil and evaporate. Surtur's flame have proven capable of hurting powerful beings such as Thor, and he claims that he can create enough energy to melt an entire galaxy. Surtur also has the ability to shapeshift and can increase his size to such incredible proportions that he dwarfs stars. He's also proficient in magic and is able to summon and command legions of incredibly powerful fire demons, each of which can fly and manipulate flames themselves. But Surtur is not only a formidable fighter, but is also an accomplished forger of powerful weaponry. His most significant achievement in forging weapons is the completion of the Twilight Twilight Sword, an incredibly powerful mystical blade that greatly enhances Surtur's strength. The Twilight Sword is around 500 feet in length and is made from a metal found only in the mines of Muspelheim called Scabrite. Surtur forged the sword in the heart of the Burning Galaxy, which was home to the Corbinites before being destroyed by Surtur and his forces so that the energy from the galaxy could be harnessed to forge the blade. Now, for those of you guys who are unfamiliar with the Corbinites, they're an extraterrestrial race, the most famous of which is Beta Ray Bill, and the destruction of their homeworld by Surtur is actually what caused Bill to to cross paths with Thor in the first place, as he was seeking revenge against Surtur. But going back to the Twilight Sword, it's an insanely powerful weapon containing vast mystical energy. Wielding the Twilight Sword, Surtur was able to destroy the Rainbow Bridge of Asgard and cut through one of Odin's blasts.
glass, which produced shockwaves felt in nine realms. The sword also affords Surtur a great deal of protection from attacks, as it shields him from a blast from Thor that likely would have killed Surtur had it landed. The magical effects of the sword were also strong enough to neutralize Odin's powers, which is no small feat given how powerful of a deity Odin actually is. But the most impressive feat Surtur has pulled off with the Twilight Sword are probably using it to slice through the fabric of time and space to create a portal to Midgard, and cutting through the dimensional barriers that separate Asgard from Muspelheim. And so the sword is able to tear through time, space, and dimensional barriers, which I would say make it among the most powerful weapons in all of Marvel Comics. However, the sword's full potential is not reached until it joined with the Eternal Flame of Destruction, which is a magical flame which, as its name suggests, cannot be put out. When the sword and the flame combine, the result is a weapon whose true power is likely immeasurable, but is at least capable of bringing about the end of Asgard. So yeah, Surtur is definitely a character that is well beyond Omega level, and he's not only capable of destroying a world, but in fact, destined to do so. Not only is he prophesized to bring about the end of Asgard, but he was able to destroy the entire Corbinite homeworld and its galaxy in order to simply create a weapon. But with that being said, guys, we're gonna bring this video to an end. If you are new here to Comics Explained, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like, and I will catch you all later. Peace.